which leads us to the fourth and last question, and it goes like this. Beside the name, what parts of psychoanalysis are relevant to neuropsychoanalysis? This is not criticism, but a request for clarification, as unconscious processes have so far been discussed in general terms, and I found nothing else that was reminiscent of psychoanalytical approaches. So, um, the, this question, the, you must remember it's a very unusual thing. Uh, I'm one of the very few neuroscientists I know uh, who took the trouble or found it necessary to train uh, as a psychoanalyst. And the reason that was because I felt there was something lacking in the neuroscience of the early 1980s, which is when, um, which is the period I'm talking about. Uh, I imagined, I mean, I, like all of you, no doubt, thought that the really interesting thing about the brain, as opposed to the liver and the stomach, is that it feels like something to be a brain. I am my brain. The brain is the organ of the mind. And uh, so I fondly imagined that I was going to learn all about that uh, by becoming a, a behavioral neuroscientist. But I didn't. I was taught about language and memory and perception and skilled movement and so on all of these instruments of the mind, but the mind itself was left out of account. There, there was no psyche in neuropsychology. And it was when I asked my professors, but what about feelings and what about consciousness and what about the self? What about motivation? Um, you know, the, what about the personality, uh, etc.? The obviously really big ticket items about the mind, they honestly said to me, one, uh, actually, uh, I'm very, I re very much, I remember him very fondly, but my one professor uh, kindly advised me that I must not ask questions like that. It's bad for my career. You know, and that's where I realized, gosh, you know, I've, I've, I've got to look elsewhere to learn about these things. And that's why I turned to psychoanalysis, because psychoanalysis, for all of its faults, because psychoanalysis really also has many limitations. But the, 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 the wonderful thing about psychoanalysis is that Unlike other branches of mental science, it takes as its starting point the actual lived life of the mind, the subjective experience of being a mind. And with that comes all of these topics um, that uh, I've been saying are, for me, the big ticket items, the obviously really serious uh, uh, matters that need to be understood if we're going to make any headway in understanding the mind. So why I then turned as a neuroscientist to psychoanalysis was because I wanted to bring that type of model of the mind, that type of way of thinking about the mind, a way of approaching that perspective upon the mind and the methods that come with it. That's what I wanted to bring into neuroscience. And um, in so doing, by the way, I was mindful of the fact that I would also be doing something good for psychoanalysis because I would be bringing simultaneously the scientific rigor of neuroscience into psychoanalysis. And when I said earlier, psychoanalysis has many faults, that's one of them. You know, there's always been this very uncomfortable ambiguity in psychoanalysis between discovery and invention. You know, you, Freud says he's found this. Jung says he's found something else. You know, Adler says he's found something else. You know, and I'm using the extreme examples, even within orthodox psychoanalysis, there's a pl plurality of different schools, schools of wisdom. You know, it's an embarrassment uh, in, a, in a, a discipline that claims to be a science to have so many competing points of view and nobody can decide between them because there is no method by which we can do that in psychoanalysis. So, um, but leaving that side account, uh, uh, out of account, the, 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 the primary uh, goal my primary goal was to bring the real lived life of the mind, uh, which is what psychoanalysis is about, to bring that into neuroscience. Now, what does that mean? It means everything that's been learnt about the mind subjectively realized uh, in psychoanalysis over 100 years, all of that can now be brought into neuroscience in order to guide our researchers. Um, so what I've been talking about in this course, trying to point uh, out what the neural correlates are of something like the capacity for subjective consciousness, uh, something like intentionality, etc. This is trying to bring the basic stuff of the volitional, intentional agent of the mind, the self, the thing that psychoanalysis is about, trying to bring that into neuroscience. The tools that psychoanalysis offers are of two kinds. The one kind, which is a very important one, 
is the conceptual armamentarium, the theoretical models that it has built. It's the only discipline that has concepts for things like narcissism, you know, things like love. Uh, it, it sort of uh, uh, has uh, analyzed what love is made of, uh, what what relationships are made of, what 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 do we mean by um, an attachment um, to an, an affectionate bond to another. These are really the ingredients of a lived life. To have tools um, that pass these things into their component parts as a result of subjective research, which is the other thing that psychoanalysis contributes, which is methods for investigating subjectivity. Uh, the, these tools then become our starting point um, in trying to bring the lived life of the mind um, into neuroscience. Now, it goes without saying that that's just a starting point. You know, uh, bringing these uh, terms and concepts, uh, this conceptual armamentarium and these methods into neuroscience is a starting point whereby we can then try to do better science with those things to improve both neuroscience and psychoanalysis. So that's what I mean by neuropsychoanalysis. Um, the, 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 I'm very much aware that I do myself no favors um, in the neurosciences with my, my colleagues were first absolutely dismayed. You know, what are you doing with psychoanalysis? It was like an astronomer saying to his colleagues, uh, he's going to study astrology. That's how they saw it. Um, so I, I want you to understand how much I value um, what psychoanalysis stands for. So much so that I was prepared to put that name on the discipline that I'm trying to um, uh, develop, uh, regardless of all of the, or notwithstanding all the baggage that comes with it, because I think that that approach to the mind is so valuable. And the theoretical yield of that approach over the last hundred years is an enormously valuable starting point for us to try to take the science of the mind, the whole science of the real mind, further. And um, I hope that that's an adequate answer to the question. So there you go. Thanks very much for those four questions. I always enjoy receiving them and I enjoy answering them. And I'm looking forward to next week. Thanks very much. Bye.